We organize uh, tournaments for brands, for sponsors. We have our own uh, championships. Um, and we organize as well uh, tournaments for editors, video game editors with, uh, with uh, Riot Games, for example, um, especially in, uh, in Europe. And we have also uh, pro clubs like uh, PSG uh, Esports um, and pro players on, on, some, uh, on some games. Okay, thank you, Stefan. Hi there, uh, my name is Stephen Reed. I um, have been a, an educator for 20 years and using specifically games to teach off-the-shelf games, not games made for education, but the kind of games that children are just playing. And so uh, the first game I ever taught with was Command & Conquer Red Alert. And I've used 140 games in 70 countries so far um, over the over 20 years. And that takes me through, you know, Little Big Planet, Journey, uh, Kerbal Space Program, Red Dead Redemption, uh, even Call of Duty, you name it, we've used it to teach. And uh, significantly in looking at three separate things with those games, the first is explicit curriculum, math, science, literacy, the kind of stuff that we teach in schools. And we can do that, of course, with, with many games. But the second is the implicit curriculum. So things like gender equality, the refugee crisis, religious and moral tolerance, cultural um, exploration, climate change, the kind of things that we don't teach explicitly, but we can through games very, very powerfully. And then the third is social and emotional learning. How do we teach children how to be better people through games uh, and, and better in our society through games. Um, I now work for Microsoft and I specialize in using Minecraft. Uh, I've used Minecraft for 10 years now to do exactly that. Um, and I'm also leading the Minecraft esports uh, output for Microsoft. So we've developed 24 pieces of content and we are rolling out Minecraft uh, leagues, Minecraft eSport leagues in schools, colleges and universities all over the world, including on the continent of Africa. In fact, I put out a tweet today to say that actually Africa is our leading content, uh, con is the leading continent for our content so far, which is great. And then you can, you can go to introduce yourself. Hello everyone, um, my name is Ife Akintaju. Um, I am the content manager for the Afro Gamer, and the Afro Gamer is a um, content platform for um, esports in Africa as a whole. Um, what the con what the Afro Gamer does is we decide to tell the stories of things that is happening in Africa. There's so much going in terms of gaming um, and esports. So what we do is we decide to make sure that the world knows, and even Africa knows that this is happening and I'm happy to be here. Okay, thank you. So my, uh, the first question, uh, eSport is not just about competition, there are also uh, social aspects related to education, training and business. Can you tell us more and what do you think? And I will send the question in the chat so you can read it if you need. <laughs> so, who wants to go, to go on on this question? Uh, yes, I, I can go if you want. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what's, I think for me what's important is that um, eSports has the same uh, values of, as, as traditional sports. So it's about, uh, it's about dedication, it's about team spirit, it's about uh, hard work, it's about uh, uh, skills, it's about uh, having fun also, or obviously, uh, and it's also about learning. So, so, so yes, this is, this is a great leverage to, to educate, to share, to teach, uh, to, uh, to gather people um, around the cause, around the, around the, around the goal. And, and what, what's interesting with this force is that you, you can do that uh, with a, a very special, fun way or entertaining way, uh, and, and you and you can talk to more broad audiences with with uh, by, by doing this. So that's 
that's very important for me. This the, the, the values that 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 lay uh, around esports, um, and and we we can see it. Well, I, I haven't seen it for now in Africa, but but it's it's mainly because uh, a, a lot of African countries cannot uh, use uh, streaming. Uh, as a payment tool, but but in Europe, for example, you have a lot of uh, very big uh, charity events with uh, with esports uh, that that can raise the, uh, millions of euros, um, with and and put some light on 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 a cause, on healthcare, on on press freedom, on, on things that usually aren't very fun to talk about. And with this kind of event, with a lot of, uh, of streamers or of, of uh, influencers uh, that 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 plays charity esports, you can raise money. You can make a lot of uh, a, a, a lot of uh, mainstream awareness around around this, uh, those uh, those those uh, things. And and lastly, what I want to say is that uh, esports is now. Uh, uh, as much powerful as as music or, or movies or or big big um, entertainment industries, so it's it's totally legit uh, to 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 use it for for uh, education, uh, charity, and 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 social matter. It's it's a it's a very uh, powerful uh, leverage. Yeah, if I could just um, if I could just add to that, as Evans um, covered so much there already. But actually, esport, and I think this is true of gaming in general, is that from parents as well as you know education professionals and 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 you know business and stuff. I think gaming is still overlooked as a fundamentally critical part of our a, a foundation of our, uh, our 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 human nature and and as a result you know I, I quite often talk about the fact that we're still debating today whether or not it's a capital e or a small e or an e hyphen capital s for esports in fact i was involved in the debate this week um but the only reason we're even having that debate is because we can't just call it sport we, nobody will admit that this is just a sport. It has to be an electronic sport. I mean, it can't be. It can't be like cricket after all. And I think what we need to do in order to be able to really focus on the true social impact of, because um, we wouldn't argue the social impact of any other sport, but we argue the social impact of esports, and we argue about the educational impact of esports, and. And, and the business impact, we argue about those things because we still haven't agreed that it's a sport. It's a, it's a, it's an organized, competitive, creative pastime like football. And the crazy thing is, we pay, certainly in Europe, Ivan will relate, we pay footballers hundreds of thousands a week to kick a ball. And yet we argue about funding for esports. And so I think what we need to do in order to be able to truly grasp the powerful social aspects, the education, the training and the business that you're talking about, we need to redefine the way we look at play as part of our social makeup globally. And actually, I think Africa has a wonderful opportunity to do that because Africa somebody mentioned in the previous one that you know africa is the gem uh, the esports gem that has been untapped so far i agree so far you have, a blank, you have a blank canvas start again and show the world why play is important and why esports sits at the center of some of the most important sporting um uh, events that we are going to have in the next 10 20 30 years um but yeah i, mean, I think overall the social the, the social aspects and the impact is is huge educationally we are teaching i mean we're using minecraft at the moment and other esports titles but we're using minecraft primarily to use in an esports capacity to assess all kinds of learning when we do a build battle for example and the students are using the build battle to play 
and show what they've learned. And the teachers are then using that as a definitive assessment model to show comprehension of maths or literacy or science or history, um, etc. And not to mention the career readiness as well. You know, like to bring a AAA title to market, there are 400 plus jobs that are required, not just coders, but designers and, and character uh, um, designers and, and um, animators and all sorts of wonderful things, as well as the legal teams and the HR teams and the administration teams. Um, and so the gaming industry itself is huge, like just the, the, the career potential for children all over the world and significantly on the African continent to compete with the rest of the world is just remarkable. And so I think eSport is the gateway. I genuinely believe that eSports is one of the biggest gateways to future careers and social impact that we have seen in a long, long time. Yeah, I, I totally agree with Stephen. Um, as you said, I, I had a conversation with um, someone recently where the person was arguing um, about you know, um, football and um, you know, playing video get FIFA and you know, talking about the fact that it can never be considered as 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 sports, but I think you hit the the nail on the head. And one thing, um, or the, the other areas that I believe that, um, uh, you know, when it comes to esports, the kind of skill that I also promotes, um, project management, which is um really mm -hmm. a, a big deal and storytelling. Um, I I have um a niece who plays um and the way she's able to consistently tell different stories using. Um, Roblox. I've, I've, I've spoken with a lot of um, children because we're actually um, working on a program uh, for um, you know K twelve, and it's just amazing the amount of skill that they'll be able to from you know being a part of the esports ecosystem, you know from learning people management to storytelling to arts um, project management. There's broadcasting as well, streaming. So much that um, you know can be learned or developed from being a part of um, sports. Absolutely. And um, uh, yeah, a hundred percent. And things like even that narrative that you said, you know, the storytelling and the narrative, it's all part of a much wider creative process, which again, we have, we're in danger of just dismissing that. We're in danger. And I see this in education every day where people go, yeah, but it's just video games, like really. But they, but they're dismissing every small thing that is that, that makes up what the children are actually doing, their creativity, their decision making, their judgment. I mean, children playing video games, and there's studies, of course, about this, but children playing video games are making thousands and thousands of minuscule decisions every second. You know, it, it like the, the brain is just switched on and on fire. And yet, and yet we put them down, we sit them down in classrooms, we make them face the front to this day, you know, we're still doing it and we ask them to focus on one thing at a time in their school. And then we wonder why they're bored because they're going home at night and they're playing video games that are asking thousands and thousands of decisions to be made in a few seconds. So we really need to rethink all of this. Hello, uh, it's Ummu Ken from Mauritania, the responsible of female soccer at Mauritanian Federation of Football. And uh, at the same time, I'm a FIFA ambassador for women in football leadership. And I'm um, also working in a humanitarian social activist. Uh, and uh, since 10 years, I'm working with an international organization, an NGO that I'm leading since like uh, 10 years. And I'm glad to participate in uh, this uh, great conference. Thank you so much. Can we use eSport to teach young people in failure who their patients show them the career training and employment opportunity that they are through gaming and eSport? And are there any programs in this direction? Thank you. So I think that um, Africa, it is a huge <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I was telling that uh, Africa, it is a huge continent uh, of uh, a lot of opportunities. And we know that 50% um, uh, of uh, African youth are 25 years old, and most of them are using uh, uh, smartphones and playing a lot of games. So I think it is a big opportunity how we can use uh, e-sports that can educate 
awake and uh, can empower how we can change mentalities in a lot of situations. Sorry, there is someone talking. So, I, uh, like I said, uh, we have 50% of uh, African youth who have 20, 25, uh, less than 25 years old. And uh, as we can, as we as we know, that a lot of uh, uh, youth are using smartphones and uh, are very. Uh, they love playing a lot of games. So how can we use this game that can awake? And as you know, in Africa, we are facing so many situations, the lack of education. Uh, some part of Africa, we have um, poverty and how many young girls uh, are affected about uh, violence they're facing. So I think that's Oh, I hope that we can use that e-sport that can bring some awakeness, that can teach African youth. It can be a big, big, big for me opportunities that we can use. They can play at the same time. This game is teaching them how they can have, a, uh, um, that can awake them at the same time. It can be very useful for them to be part of the development and uh, uh, role models that can play a big role to change the situation that uh, Africa are, are facing. So uh, a game that can really help them and, and motivate them to know some realities that they are facing. That's it, thank you. I think, if I might, I think one of the other things to keep in mind is that you know, we all, we're all aware that we live in a more globalised society every day. And, the, you know, the, the world is getting smaller and smaller and smaller for these children. I mean, 20 years ago, children in the UK weren't really competing for jobs with children with, from Africa or, or, or Asia. But now those jobs, particularly in the big tech industries and the gaming industries and the movie industries and, and, and so on, are global jobs and you know I, I i was flown out to san francisco for a, a a job interview from the uk and so t today our children are I, if it is there any other question and i, I hope that i respond to, to that to the question so in africa there is not i asked it last time about any program in that direction i think uh, I don't think so. There is now an, uh, any any programs in that direction. I don't think so. I will ask my my collaborator, who is uh, Kofi Lazu in Dakar. It's him that's really uh, talk us about esports. It is toward him that we really discover about esports. So, uh, I mean, if it is there, it is not enough. It is not enough. They they need more program about that. So I think it is very important to to see all uh, people working about sport in in general. Uh, I like try to to work with the ministries of sport in Africa. Try to do some research about how people. Uh, that because most of people don't know about esports, so especially those who can play a big role, like uh, some people in the government, uh, how we can touch the schools to do a lot of uh, uh, sensitization to make people know more about the importance that esports can play how they can collaborate with some universities, some schools, and uh, try to collaborate with some uh, associ national association about the sport, try to collaborate with the, the federations, uh, the National Committee Olympics, all of them, because uh, the more of them that I that I um, work with, I never see them talking a lot about uh, esports. So it is very important uh, that all of them uh, try to understand more about esports because they 
they hear about it, but they don't. They really don't know what is the meaning of esports. So I think it is important that people try to organize a lot of meetings uh, because uh, most of people are not very used to the technology. So it is important to do uh, some meetings that uh, in presence of some some leaders that can play, that can understand and can play a big role that esports uh, can be really part of, uh, of, of uh, all the programs that people have in their agenda and try to put it, uh, yeah. And I think now actually, yeah. Maybe Stephen, you can go. Sure, so, so sorry, I, I thought. I could go early, I, that's my fault. Um, so yeah, so we live in an increasingly globalized society where our, our children are competing, you know, children in, in Africa are competing with children in Europe for exactly the same jobs because of that globalization. And I think that um, we need to prepare all our children for that reality, that, that you know, that rea through, through and, and actually the, the question about um, uh, th their passions is that that's one of the ways in which we can really uh, harness the, the 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 passions that children already have is just to say hey what is it you what is it you enjoy and and this is what education should be about anyway education should always be about what somebody enjoys doing really you know like you're not going to purposefully go out there and look for a job that you hate you're not going to and therefore you're never really going to like nobody does hobbies that they don't enjoy. And therefore, we should be harnessing that as part of our kind of getting our, our, our youth and our students to, to look for the joy in life. That they, and then they, that's where they're going to put their energy. That's where they're going to grow. And that's where they're ultimately going to be able to compete. And actually, that resilience of, you know, if you're failing at something you don't enjoy, you'll give up. Esports, as I said earlier, esports and particularly esports in Africa is a. I believe it will be the gateway to saying to children, "Hey, here's an entire world of wonderful things that you enjoy." I mean, we know that the average gamer is, you know, 32 years old. Um, we know that huge, huge numbers of our population worldwide are gaming. Africa should be no different. And then to be able to say to those children, "If this is a space that you enjoy being in, if this is one of your passions, we have." opportunities we have embraced esports with you and that's the thing is that i think in order for this to be a success this has to start happening at school level collegiate level university it has to be more open in the home you know i speak to some parents that are like i don't want my kids doing that it doesn't matter how much their children love doing it they don't want their children doing it because they have the negative um kind of uh, feelings about it being a distraction or too much screen time or you know whatever, violent, that kind of stuff. And so what we need to do is we need to go, all of this is about going back to the basics. We need to re-educate adults in order to be able to allow children the freedom to explore the passion and fail as part of a wider learning process in esports. And I think, again, Africa stands on the precipice of doing all of that differently um, than perhaps other nations who uh, and other continents who have embraced it earlier and are ma and, uh, and have either already made those mistakes or are still making them. Um, in terms of programs in that direction, I will leave that to the people in Africa. All I know is that from our Microsoft perspective, we are developing programs right now and we're running them in uh, Kenya and South Africa and we've also got um, Senegal and Madagascar and all sorts of places that are coming to us and saying, can we do that? So programs are coming, certainly from our perspective. Um, first of all, gaming as a whole is already in Africa's culture. Mm -hmm. We game um, growing up, you know, I would starve myself of lunch to go and watch or play people. And if you, okay, so um, yeah, so what I was saying is, the opportunities for esports and education as a whole is a new opportunity, not even just for the young at heart, but even as the the younger generation, because like a lot of people have said, there's this misconception that gaming, if it's not tagged as gambling, is tagged as a distraction or, um, mm -hmm. you know, you're wasting your time. And that is something that that education has to go from top to the bottom where we're educating everyone 
that these are the possibilities of gaming and esports. And talking about the education of esports, also, there's also that misconception that it's all about just playing the game. And we need to be able to educate everyone, the young at heart, to show them that it's not just gaming. So just like how you have the, the business of football, you don't have to just know how to play football or play basketball. You have the content creators, you have the media side of things, you have the, the lawyers who sign looks over contracts, who handle those contracts, you have the managers. So that also, you know, can also be an opportunity for the young kids. If they say they don't like playing games, there's still that opportunity. What, like, you know, the previous speaker said, what they like to do. If all someone needs to do says, I like to post on social media, I'm a social media influencer, I'm a content creator, you can also carve out a niche for yourself in esports. So I think the education needs to be adjusted and widened beyond just the game part of things because not everyone is going to love playing games. Fine, we have, you know, the millions of gamers in Africa as a whole. We have, you know, the mobile side, we have the console, we have the PC, and they are running in hundreds of millions in Africa. But once again, you still have those who would like the fashion side of things, who like the music side of things. And we need to be able to tie all these, you know, pieces to esports. So if it's, you like to, you like music, you create music, then you can network with game developers on the continent so that you could give them the soundtrack for that. So for every opportunity outside of esports that you know, it can be tied to esports, basically. And I believe that's um, an, something as stakeholders, we should be able to be able to, um, you know, market to the younger generation when, they, when you start talking to them about gaming and esports. And just talk about the opportunities in terms of programs. I know there's um, HP. HP has um, HP Garage, where they have um, tutorials, they have talks and webinars about gaming and esports so the game development side of things and you know the esports side of things where you have seasoned speakers in the industry talk about their experiences or you know what it entails to join esports and you know like you mentioned about microsoft i know microsoft is also working towards that educational part of things so i, I believe all that is what you know stakeholders who are in africa as a whole should try and take advantage of Okay. Um, so, I mean, I think everyone has, has, has actually, um, everyone has made a valid point. Um, in terms of um, employment opportunities through uh, sports and, you know, the programs available, um, I'm, I would say from what even if I said, right from when um, we were young, um, a lot of people used to spend money to go to um, game cafes to play. Some would starve themselves just to go and play games and compete with other people. Um, so that has always existed in um, Nigeria. Um, also looking at the current um, situation of things in Nigeria, um, we actually have access to um, over a thousand schools. Um, we're, we're working on a program for um, next year already in talks with um, national brands as well. Um, I, I can't disclose the full details yet, but um, even our interaction with students, we can actually see that a lot of students um, and um, a lot of people want to play um, games and beyond playing games, they also want to watch. Um, I've seen um, even girls from the age of eight, seven, you know, watching, um, you know, Minecraft videos, Roblox videos, Among mm -hmm. Us streams on, you know, um, YouTube and other streaming platforms. And it's just amazing to see that people can actually sit down and watch, you know, for that period of time. And that's really, that's the, that's the era that we're getting into. Um, so, of course, we know that there are those who want to be entertained um, through um, esports. Not everybody would be able to play, um, at least competitively. Um, recently, we opened um, a um, cafe in partnership with um, Hard Rock, Hard Rock Cafe here in Lagos. And um, we've also had quite a number of um, kids come, um, as well as adults. And it's just, even for those who didn't know how to play um, certain games, as soon as they picked the pad and were able to take certain moves everyone just you know people want to have fun uh, but beyond the fun side of things if you're looking uh you know people are, are taking in content 
you would see there's an opportunity for um, content creation. We know that in terms of infrastructure, things are not as great as want it to be um, in this side of the world, but um, there, there are definitely lots of um, opportunities. Um, for programs, I know that um, I know Microsoft is is working on uh, on on something, and uh, um, of course, what we're also working on as well, we're going to be running the pilot um, next year with um, about fifteen to twenty schools before we expand to um, other schools as well, and uh, you know other uh, partnerships that we're we're looking at, education in the esports space and the gaming space as well is very important because there are lots of skills that people can. Um, you know, draw from. I mean, we're looking at intellectual property um, across, uh, you know, the entertainment industry, from music to you know, films, animations, games. It's, it's there's a there's a lot to you know unbox from uh, from all of this. And also, I know music is most likely one of the uh, most successful entertainment you know sectors here in um, this side of the world. Um, and um, there's also the opportunity. I mean. The, there, we had lots of programs last year for you know street and it was difficult to even find those who understood you know um some of these things because you, you know we had restriction of um you know movements and yeah, people getting into um a place where um, or having events it's, it's a skill that a lot of people can learn through um games and esports um yeah so um i know that a lot more people are most likely planning uh, programs that uh, would help. I'm not sure there's um, anyone that is is effectively running that I, I know of, um, but I'm sure from next year we'll be seeing quite which would actually help accelerate um, education around gaming and East Africa. Um, yes, well, on 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 my side, uh, I, I I I've seen a few uh, I've seen a few. Projects uh, from uh, from uh, some some local authorities here. Um, some years ago, I, I met the uh, the youth and sport uh, minister of uh, Tunisia, and uh, who loved to play video games. And uh, for him, he, he had the vision that 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 video games and esports can be a great tool. Um, to work with youth that is uh, out of the system or or in 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 a scholar failure or or uh, cut from from the society and and they launched uh, a, an official uh, federation so it's I think it's a great vision I think it's a, it's it's a great thing to do but. Um, the, the 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 problem I see with those those types of, of uh, uh, you know uh, official federation is that they they are not really connected with the the, the, the grassroots communities and 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 the, the the players communities so so for now it's it's a bit early stage but I think that as the the, the the, the, the market, the video games industry is growing up. They they will be more successful in in uh, in uh, in uh, in the years to come. But I, I see that as uh, as a good sign uh, that even uh, people from government start to think about that and start to think about that in the right way. So I, I think that's a, a a strong and 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 positive sign. Okay, thank you. Um, so I will uh, ask you another question, and it's how do you see the future of eSport and its place in Africa? What is missing for takeoff? Yeah, so let me let me jump in for this one. Um, oh. I believe for the future of eSports, and it, it is it is great. Although um, we ha presently we are doing majority of. Um, gaming than esports but um it's good to know that africa is in the awareness stage at least that is that is that is a good starting point um i believe and the benefit of esports now for africa is the 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 we have the blessing to be able to use our culture so you have game developers who are 
making games and tying it to our culture. We um, presently, um, a game we all just released a combat mobile game, and he's trying to make it an esports tie to where you, any part of Africa you can play. So I think, you know, the future is Africa for esports, and that's because we've seen everything the Western world can offer. And now, you know, if you play the mobile game, you would see the deities, the little gods that many are used to, either, you know, the god of thunder, which is not Thor in this point, but, you know, there's a local one in Africa, or, you know, the god of war in an African country. And, you know, I believe it's a way to tie our culture into things like that. So um, I believe the possibilities are endless. Uh, we just need to move from the awareness stage to, you know, to start to build it one block at a time. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I, I forgot the question uh, in the chat, but I saw, Suzanne, that you answered. Maybe you want to, to talk about it more or it, it's okay? So the question was, um, are the National Esports Federation or organization in Africa effective in developing the industry? Um, is that question for me? Well, for everyone. And uh, I saw okay. Susan. Could, uh, could you repeat that question about. Um, yeah. I think it's... they write it. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so um, in terms of the National um, Esports Federation and um, the organizations in Africa, um, when it comes to that, I know last year um, we started conversation. Um, federal governments of uh, Nigeria um, regarding esports e and, you know, just putting a proper structure in place. Um, but, I mean, we've had quite a number of meetings, but we, we haven't exactly concluded um, in Nigeria um, at the federal level. Um, but in Lagos State, um, Lagos State is the commercial um, city of uh, Nigeria, and um, I know there's currently... Um, a, there's currently a, a, an association, I think, under the the Lagos State go, um, under the Lagos State Sports Commission um, that is running. But it's it's early stage. If you know, there's it, there's it's effective or not because um, we haven't exactly seen the plans. I just feel like um, currently it looks more like a there's a, a bit of disconnect between um, the federations and the grassroots and of course you know stakeholders. But uh, it's possible that there are plans in place to sort of bring um, stakeholders and, you know, um, um, those gaming at the grassroots level, bring everybody together and sort of find that, that balance. So it's, it's a bit early stage to say if, um, you know, to say, to, to be able to determine if they're effective or not. But so far, we haven't really seen much, but I'm sure um, a lot of people are working the scenes and hopefully um, we get to start seeing some of um, the initiatives and the effectiveness of, um, these associations and uh, and federations. Okay, so just to add to case, what Suzanne uh, said, can I can I can I answer that question, please? Mm. Yeah, sure, sure, go ahead. Okay. Yes, I, I in 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 our case, in our case, uh, we still uh, we we still uh, need to set in place uh, an e-sport uh, federation. So this is can be very helpful that they can. Uh, show up uh, the importance of esports. So in our case, in some places in, in, in West Africa, we, we, we need to set in play, uh, to, to put in place uh, an esports uh, federation. And this is for me the, the very important to, to, to work uh, and make it, uh, to, to develop it. Voila, that's it. Thank you. Okay, um, so um, just to buttress what Suzanne had said, um, we really do not have federation, official federations that we're actually seeing what they are doing. And um, like Susan said, there's, you know, there are a few moves that we've been seeing, but looking at Africa as a whole, you, we, we find out, I think we, there's Mesa in Morocco. Um, I'm not certain if they are actually a federation under the government. I just know that they are a body. I know we do have one in South Africa also. I think the one in South Africa is under the government, but looking at all other African countries, it's more about, you know, it's been community-based, where you've had gaming communities, you know, forming an association and having a president and so on and so forth. But like Susan said, there's still that discrepancy. 
some governments have not, or Ministry of Sports have not yet adopted or embraced esports as we speak. And so, you know, there's that power tussle as to, okay, you know, do we need the government? And, you know, with me speaking to a few gamers, there's also that question of, do we need federations? And what is the federation actually going to do for us? Um, that aside, I know, you know, we have governing bodies abroad. We have the Global Esports Federation, who they just, you know, introduced the African Esports Development Federations, and they are looking to network with different African countries and their communities to see how, you know, that can be adopted. I know, you know, days after also the International Esports Federation also introduced, um, you know, an African body that is also going to look at how to engage. So there's, you know, those are positive moves towards the continent. But I think the question now is, you know, what is going to be the roadmap for the federations? Because let's put this in perspective. Most of this Ministry of Sports are clueless about what esports is. Mm -hmm. So if they are going to adopt it, what's going to be the roadmap? And like Susan has said, for many, we haven't actually seen what the portfolio is. How is it going to affect the grassroots? What are the education policies to go around to make sure that everyone, you know, benefits from it and, you know, not just a segmented few as we speak. Um, I know someone said there is an official royal federation in Morocco, but it is very new. So, okay, there are a few of them, but Africa as a whole, not, not too much federation. So we're looking at, you know, more of 2022 to actually see what the Global Esports Federation is going to do and what the International Esports Federation is actually going to do with their new adopted bodies. Yeah. Um, could, I, could I just add to that? My only, I mean, I have many thoughts on this, but in the time that I have to speak, my, my only real thought on this is going back to a point that one of the speakers made earlier about the importance of African culture. Um, and I keep going back to this idea that esports is a, a gateway and, and, and actually from an African perspective, it can be a very fresh, new gateway. I think one of the biggest things that Africa can do is be, is be brave and proud about how they tackle esports and genuinely throw everything you've got at, at making esports in Africa unique. Don't I personally wouldn't be worried about looking at the International Esports Federation to see what they're doing or to look at the Europeans to see what they're doing or the Brits or the Americans. I would be really, and I know obviously that's, you need to kind of pay some attention to what's going on around the world, but there's an opportunity for Africa to do this bigger and louder and more unique than anyone else in the world. And the sheer richness and diversity of your entire continent. I mean, I'm doing work at the moment in South Africa where you know, the esports is, is, is transcending languages and it's transcending cultures and it's transcending race. And it's just the most amazing experience um, you know, doing esports in the context of Africa. And I just think that that celebration of your culture um, or your, you know, your multiple cultures is just, and so esports in Senegal is going to be completely different to, to esports in Madagascar and completely different to esports in Egypt. And I think that there, there's something beautiful about that. And I don't think you need to look at the rest of the world and follow. I think you need to look at the rest of the world and lead. And I genuinely mean that. Like, I think there's an opportunity that I would hate to find myself in 10 years time coming back to an event or 20 years time, you know, and coming back to an event and saying, Africa followed, they followed Europe, they followed Asia. I, I, I hope that doesn't happen because I think you have an opportunity to show the world how we, and, and, and the reason I say that actually, let me justify why I'm saying that. Because it's easy to say that and then hope that somebody goes off and does it. But there's a certain degree of snobbery around esports. I mean, when I started doing Minecraft in esports and really talking about the benefits of Minecraft as an esport title, I was laughed at for months, months and months and months by people in the industry. People in esports said, it's not an esport. Like Dota is an esport. League of Legends is an esport, not Minecraft. And there was this real snobbery about what is esports and 
you know, you're not allowed to tell us what esports is. You're not allowed to change the parameters of esports. And and I actually think the industry needs to really be careful about that. And I think Africa has a has an opportunity to say, we're going to show you what African esports looks like. And that's any title you want, you know, in any as long as kids and, and this is how I defined it with, with, with in those in those arguments was if I build this in Minecraft, believe me, children will come. And they have. They, they in their millions. They, they, you know, and, and so I think Africa's the same. If you if you are brave and you celebrate Africa through esports, believe me, the world will the world will come to you. Okay, thank you. So we will have to end this talk and the event in January. So maybe if you all have a, a last word before before finish, something to add? Uh, yes, for, for me, uh, I, I just wanted to talk about something very quickly is that um, uh, for esport industry, um, and, and, and this is all over the world, um, it, it mainly uh, is financed by sponsorships. I mean, mm -hmm. when, when you talk about tournaments, very big tournaments, when you talk about uh, clubs, when you talk about pro players, uh, and when you talk about all the ecosystem that goes around, like producers or uh, streaming producers, etc., uh, sponsors has a great, great, great role to play. So I think that some of them uh, be, be, began to understood that, like telcos or some banks, but we need to work more to convince them because they, they really have a great role to play. Uh, Esport without sponsors is like sports, traditional sports without any sponsors, and it doesn't work. So if, if we want to have a very uh, uh, dynamic and, 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 and rich uh, ecosystem, uh, we, need to, we need to bring more sponsors and, and we need to give more uh, uh, more financial uh, uh, means to all those uh, great actors that already exist. I mean, I mean, the, the, the future of the sport in Africa has already begun. I, I, I cannot hear that that it's uh, it, it's not here. So, but but this is really important, and and we try to do that with with our company. Uh, and that there are a lot of other companies that. Uh, that try to do it as well, and and I think we need to work harder for that because without uh, their economic uh, uh, hand, it, it will not work. Okay, so just my closing remark, um, just like Mr. Reed said, um, um, any any esports or gaming title can be esports as long as there is a community ready to play and compete. Mm -hmm. And there is a community ready to watch any sports because um, I don't know if any of you have seen this video. There's a video on YouTube where you have two people playing Brick, this popular game we played growing up, Brick, where you have to put in the right shapes to make sure that it doesn't, you know, time doesn't run out. And people were playing on Super Nintendo and people were watching. Many would say that is not an esports title, but like you know, Mr. Reed said, we need to disabuse our mind that no one gets to tell us what titles are esports titles. You have your community, you have people ready to compete, and if you can create content around it, it is esports. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So I think we will end uh, here, except if someone has something more to say, but. Uh, thank you all for your participation and the information. It was uh, complete and uh, <laughs> really interesting. Um, so thank you again, and thank you to everyone who participated to the event. This is the, the end of the African Creative Meeting, and I hope to see you all uh, for the next edition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us and giving us the opportunity.